what's this? I just read on SDM we don't have to know how to do limiting reagents on the DAT. I don't think this is correct. I'm in the library. I've got to be kind of quiet. Let me close my computer down. I've got to find Dr. Romano quick. Okay, let me shut down. Hi, Dr. Romano. Hi, come on in. I've been working away all day. Let me put my computer down. Oh, I was about ready to drop it. You're not going to believe I was just on the computer. I've been working hard all day, and I was on Student Doctor Network, and someone up there said we don't need to know limiting reagents on the DAT exam. I think that's wrong. What do you think, Dr. Romano? My best advice to you is anything you hear on Student Doctor Network to simply dismiss whether it's a student claiming to be an expert in biology who got a 30, um, to anyone giving any advice. So why don't we come around and we're going to do a limiting reagent calculation. I'll show you what to do. And it is a very important question that could very well land in the DAT exam. Thank so you, around. Dr. Romano. I know you'd have the answer. Now, this is a difficult problem, so it's going to be worth practicing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a problem. Don't worry about the numbers not being so nice. I did this with a calculator to show you on the DAT exam and in the destroyer, the numbers will be much easier to work with. But the important thing is to understand the technique. In this example, I give you a balanced equation. And I've given you two moles of ammonia reacting with CO2, carbon dioxide, to give urea and water. And we have 640 grams of ammonia and 1140 grams of CO2. Whenever you're given grams of reactants and they give you grams of one and grams of another, that's going to set the stage for a limiting reagent calculation. What I mean by a limiting reagent is simply that substance that's going to control the reaction because it's going to run out first. So we need to find the limiting reagent first. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I want to know how many grams of the urea are going to be made. So the first move is you take the grams that they give you and you divide by the weight and you convert it into moles. And you're going to write the word have. So in this example, we have 37.6 moles of NH3 to start off with. You're going to then take the 1140 grams of CO2, divide by the weight, and convert that into moles, and you're going to write the word have. Very critical to write the word have. Now, what we need to do is to see which one of these is going to run out first. So I'm going to do what I call a little test for the limiting reagent. I call this the RCT method, the Romano Comparison Technique. So I got to do a comparison. I'm going to take the very first compound that I see. It doesn't matter which one you take, but to stay consistent, I'm going to always use the first one. So I write down 37.6 moles of ammonia, and I'm going to compare it to the other reactant. Notice you have one mole of CO2 for two moles of ammonia by looking at the balanced stoichiometric equation. The moles cancel out, so 37.6 divided by 2 gives me 18.8 .8 moles of CO2. The trick is you write the word needed. So we need 18.8 .8 moles of CO2. Now, do we have that amount in the bank? Think in terms of money. We need $18.8. .8. How much do we have in the bank? 25.9. So that means we have enough. If we have enough, that means the other compound is the one that's the limiting reagent. So that means that NH3 is going to be the limiting reagent. Once we got the limiting reagent, it's downhill running from here. We're going to start the calculation with the moles of limiting reagent. So I'm going to take my 13 point, well, excuse me, I'm going to take my 37.6 moles of ammonia, and I'm going to compare the mole ratio. Notice there's one mole of urea for two moles of ammonia. Moles of ammonia cancels. You look up the weight of urea, there's 60 grams per mole. So it's going to be 37.6 times 60 
divided by 2. I'll do a quick round off. 37.6 is roughly 40. 60 over 2 is 30. So it's around 1,200 grams. Since I rounded up, the answer would be a little bit under 1,200. It'd be 1,100 and change. Even though this seems like it was a difficult problem, it's worth going over a problem like this. If the numbers are nice, this is an easy question with a little bit of practice. So remember, balancing a redox, doing a limiting reagent problem, and an ice table. Those are the three questions that most students would find the longest and the most difficult. But if you understand this question and you feel good, do the two questions or three and a half in the destroyer and you'll be set to go. Thank you, Dr. Romano. I'm going to get back to work. I knew you would clear things up for me. Good, I hope so. One of my students on the study group had a question on this, so I dedicated to the young lady that asked to put up a limiting reagent calculation. All right, good day to you. Good day to you, sir. Thanks again.